All right, how's everybody doing today? Hotep. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, writer, and historian. So it is Thursday, April 12th. I'm sorry, Thursday, April 2nd. Thursday, April 2nd, 2020. And we are live. So everybody share this broadcast on your social media uh, pages and invite your friends to tune in also. So I want to deal with this. Uh, the uh, so I'm, I'm going to give you some updates on what's going on with the uh, 2.2 trillion dollar stimulus package. Uh, there were some updates that were released from the uh, IRS in the last couple of days. A lot, of, a lot of that information I've given you already, but I told you uh, as new information is released from the IRS, I would give you an update. So I'm going to do that. Uh, but also, we have uh, the unemployment numbers. Uh, that have been released uh, that came out last week for last week and 6.6 6 million people uh, applied for unemployment last week that's on top of that's on top of the 3.3 million that reported the, that, that uh, applied the week before that I told you about already okay so it's approximately 10 million people that have filed for unemployment so we're going to deal with that I'm going to give you some updates in general on what's taking place with coronavirus also okay and uh, I will be doing a separate broadcast dealing specifically with the small business loans there's approximately uh, 377 billion dollars in small business loans it also applies to sole proprietorships as well remember I told you I was investigating that it also applies to sole proprietorships as well so there's a ton of opportunity in this bill, this 2.2 trillion dollar bill, there's a ton of opportunity opportunity in this bill. African Americans, we have to make sure that we're organized. We study this bill and we take advantage of this also. Okay, so uh, let's jump into this. All right, and everybody, sh um, African American business owners, sh uh, share the uh, uh, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Post your website and um, African American business owners. Email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com will let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network and uh, our current promotion buy one month get two months free and we have um, uh, you can pay in installments also okay we set that up so you can pay in installments as well because we know these are trying times for African American owned businesses alright so let's look at um, let's jump into this and then on top of that Wall Street just had one of its worst quarters in history Wall Street just had one of its worst quarters in history. So I expect the, I expect the Dow Jones Industrial Average to be in the toilet today also behind uh, this news of 6.6 uh, .6 million people filing for unemployment. All right. How's everybody doing? Um, let's see. And we're on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotel, I-M-H-O-T-E-P, and my Facebook fan page, The African History Network. Okay, so let's look at... Um, the uh, article here from the reporting here from NBCNews.com a record 6.6 .6 million uh, Americans filed for unemployment last week the actual number of unemployed could be much higher since many applicants had experienced trouble filing a claim as state labor departments became overwhelmed there were reports of the websites uh, for uh, various states crashing when people are trying to file for unemployment Okay, um, a record 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for uh, unemployment benefits last week. The, la the latest brutal reminder of the toll the coronavirus pandemic is taking on the U.S. economy. Now, analysts have predicted that basically 3.2 million people would file for unemployment, but it was actually 6.6 .6 million who filed for unemployment. That's after huge num a huge number of businesses across the country were forced to close down due to the need for social distancing, leaving millions of Americans without work. Thursday, uh, Thursday, uh, April 2nd uh, figure eclipses last week's record shattering 3.28 million job claims. The first real marker of the number of people out of work according to data released last week by the Department of Labor for the period ending March 21st okay now this the the the, the next job for next week when they release the job uh, the unemployment numbers on Thursday it's gonna be huge also 
because Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida just issued a stay-at-home order on Wednesday. Governor Ron, Republican Governor Ron DeSantis just issued a stay-at-home order on Wednesday. He had, been, he had been reluctant to do it. As these Republican governors, as I told you before, my last broadcast, and I talked about this on my, uh, my Sunday night show, I think that was March 29th. As these Republican governors start understanding science, because most of them are ignorant to science, as they start understanding science, and they start shutting down their states, you're going to see this skyrocket. So it's expected as many as 47 million Americans can end up filing for unemployment. All right. The, now, one of the good things is, if you've been watching my broadcast, I talked about this. This $2.2 trillion stimulus package, you get an additional $600 a week in unemployment for the federal government for up to four months. That's in addition to what you get from the state. Also, the 5.8 million, almost 6 million people in the gig market, in, in the gig uh, industry, they're Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, they work for Instacart. OK, they work for Grubhub, DoorDash, things like this. They uh, uh, this two point two trillion dollar bill. Normally, those people, uh, the independent contractors, things like this. Normally, they would not qualify for unemployment in this bill. They can file for unemployment also. And they'll get that additional six hundred dollars a week for up to four months from the federal government as well. OK, there's a lot of opportunity here. Unfortunately, a lot of people are focusing on, well, if you owe back child support, you don't get the $1,200 stimulus check. Okay, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I've talked about that before. You may or may not. They may take a portion of the $1,200 stimulus check or you may not get it at all. But it's not like they just, it's not like the, the Internal Revenue Service just keeps the check. No, the, the money goes to the custodial parent. So it's not, so it still will help African Americans unless you. You know, you married to somebody that's not African American, and I'm not against you if you do that. I'm not attacking you. I'm just saying it still goes to African Americans. It just doesn't go to that custodial person. It just, does, it just doesn't go to the person paying child support. Most of the time, is most of the time it's a man, but in some cases it could be a woman. Okay, like uh, you know, in some cases it could be a woman. So hey, all right. So um, let's continue. All right, how's everybody doing today? Share this broadcast on your social media pages. Invite your friends to tune in as well. Okay, so we're dealing with, uh, and I'm also, I'm a, I will also give you an update on what's been taking place the past couple of days dealing with uh, coronavirus as well and the spread of it. Because we're over 200,000 cases uh, here in the U.S. All right. So Thursday's figure eclipses uh, last week's record-shattering 3.28 million jobless claims, the first real marker of the number of people out of work, according to data released last week by the Department of Labor for the period uh, ending March 21st. Still, some economists said the actual number of unemployed could be much higher since many applicants had experienced trouble filing a claim as state labor departments became overwhelmed. Michelle Meyer, who is head of uh, U.S. economics, who, who is head of U.S. economics at Bank of America, told NBC News, quote, these are numbers that are way out of the range that we have seen during the financial crisis. We were seeking we were seeing a peak of about six hundred and fifty thousand first time applicants a week. OK, during the peak of the financial crisis, that 2008 financial crisis. We were seeing a peak of about 650,000 people filing for unemployment, uh, first-time applicants filing for unemployment a week, okay? We saw 3.3 million, okay, for the week of March 16th. We see 6.6 .6 million for the period ending March 21st. And, and it's, going, it's going to get worse, but luckily, because of this 2.2 trillion dollar bill they will get more unemployment okay and that's in addition to the stimulus check that's separate from the stimulus check all right um so michael faroli the chief u.s economist at uh, jp morgan 
said he had been expecting a pretty gnarly number, quote unquote, pretty gnarly number. He and his colleagues forecasted 3.5 million applications. All right. He said, I wouldn't want to tell fairy tales about why, uh, why not to worry about it. It's possible we could see large numbers for a couple of weeks. Yes, you will. Oh, you're going to see large numbers for more than a couple of weeks. Because it's expected that uh, uh, CNBC.com had an article uh, saying that it's expected that up to 47 million people could file for unemployment. And I'm telling you. As these, uh, first of all, I already said, these Republican governors, they're going to be forced to shut down. They're going to be forced to shut down all non-essential uh, businesses and things like this and shut down gatherings, etc. Okay, and we see Governor Ron DeSantis uh, is coming to his senses and he had to do that. And there's going to be other Republican governors that have to do the same thing. Okay, as that happens, you're going to see the stock market go further down. And you're going to see the number of people filing for unemployment go up. And you're going to see Donald Trump becoming more erratic and saying more things that just don't make any sense. This is what's going to happen. And as I said before, as I said before, this is his fault. This stuff, this largely was avoidable. If you've been watching my broadcast and you look at the information that just came out in the past couple of days, about how he had been ignoring early warnings. This stuff, this stuff was largely uh, avoidable. This is, this is the example of what happens when you have incompetent leadership. This is how elections have consequences. This is what happens when you have incompetent leadership that, it, that has declared war on scientists for the past three years, that has um, uh, gotten rid of a lot of scientists at the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Uh, we saw that uh, um, in May of 2018, we saw that John Bolton, uh, Donald Trump's national security advisor, uh, got rid of Rear Admiral Timothy Zimmer. Rear Admiral, Rear Admiral Timothy Zimmer, Zimmer headed up the um, uh, Global Pandemic Team, National Security Council uh, Global Pandemic Team. We go back to May 10th, 2018. This article came out from the Washington Post. You've heard me talk about this before. I, I, I have the evidence on this. Donald Trump ignored this. Then we also found out in the past couple days uh, I posted an article from the root doc, from the root.com and, and other news outlets that have been reporting this. Trump sent 1.7 tons of uh, protective uh, personal protective equipment to China. This was uh, either January or February. January or February. He sent 1.7 tons of personal protective equipment to China. But there's a short over here there's a shortage over here in the US. The top White House official responsible for leading the U.S. response in the event of a deadly pandemic has left the administration and the, globe, and the global health security team he oversaw has been disbanded under a reorganization, national security, uh, a reorganization by National Security Advisor John Bolton. This is from May 10, 2018. The abrupt departure of Rear Admiral Timothy Zimmer from the National Security Council means no senior administration official is focused solely on global health security. Timothy Zimmer's departure, let me back up, this means his departure, okay, meant that no, that, that, that no senior administration official is now focused solely on global health security. Zimmer's departure also with the breakup of his team comes at a time when many experts say the country is already unprepared for the increasing risks of a pandemic or bioterrorism. Experts were saying back in May of 2018, the U.S. was already unprepared, okay, to, uh, 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 again, uh, unprepared uh, for the increasing risk of a pandemic. And that's before Rear Admiral Timothy Zimmer, uh, John Bolton, got rid of him. John Bolton reports to Donald Trump. Who told John Bolton to do this? Because when you read the article from Foreign Policy, it talks about how Trump was the one who, who uh, ordered, the, uh, ordered uh, uh, getting rid of uh, Timothy Zimmer. But when March 13th, 20, uh, 2020, at the uh, coronavirus press conference, when uh, uh, this was in the Rose Garden, and uh, your Michelle Sendor, who's an African-American female journalist and very good at what she does, uh, she's on uh, um, a PBS uh, NewsHour. Okay, she used to be with the USA Today and she was with uh, New York Times. She asked Trump 
about uh, taking responsibility for this and and, and him uh, disbanding the uh, national him disbanding the uh, global health security team for the national security council and he played dumb. He said he didn't know anything about it. Yes, you did. Oh no, you knew exactly what was going on. Now. Pandemic preparedness and global health security are issues that require government-wide responses, experts say, as well as the leadership of a high-ranking official within the White House who is assigned only this role. Quote, health security is very fragmented with many different agencies, end quote, said J. Stephen Morrison, senior vice president at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Quote, it means coordination and direction from the White House is terribly important. So, read, read this full article from uh, from uh, WashingtonPost.com. Okay, I don't want to get deep into this here. I've dealt with this in some other broadcasts. Okay, okay, and then also African American business owners, post the name of your business here in the thread of the broadcast. Uh, email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the uh with the African History Network as well. Okay. Uh so let me post this information here. All right, let's continue. And then we found out um there was an article from the hill.com that talked about this and you, and you've heard me talk about this before that the outgoing Obama administration did a uh a hypothetical scenario. It was a a run through it was a hypothetical, it was an exercise, a hypothetical scenario for the uh, incoming Trump administration, okay? And they were preparing them in case there was a pandemic because the Trump did, because the Obama administration had been through the swine flu uh, uh, crisis as well as the Ebola crisis, okay? Okay. All right. Um... So if we look at the hill.com, the hill.com had an article from about March 17th, 2020, Obama officials walked Trump age through global pandemic exercise in 2017. Obama officials walked Trump age through global pandemic exercise in 2017. The Obama administration walked incoming Trump administration officials through a hypothetical scenario in which a pandemic worse than the 1918 Spanish flu which shut down cities like Seoul, Korea, and London, England, okay? They walked them through this in early 2017, Politico.com uh, reported. During the briefing, the Trump administration officials were told such a pandemic would likely lead to circumstances such as shortages of ventilators and that coordinated, and that a coordinated response um, would be paramount would be paramount according to uh, documents obtained by the publication of the Trump administration officials present of the Trump administration officials uh, present during the meeting about 66 percent no longer serve in the White House according to Politico okay so check this out also uh, former deputy labor uh, former, former Deputy Labor uh, Secretary Chris Liu said the advantage we had under Obama was that during the first four years we had the same White House staff. Okay, uh, he said just having the continuity makes all the difference in the world. And then, so that's from the Hill.com. Then look at Washington Post, March twentieth, twenty twenty. Okay, March twentieth, twenty twenty. U.S. intelligence reports. From January and February warned about a likely pandemic. The, the, all the, the, the evidence was there. Trump ignored it. Trump ignored it. This is his fault. He has blood on his hands. This is his fault. Okay. Uh, how's everybody doing on YouTube? Uh, RWP, Tony. Uh, we got Michelle, Michelle Wolf. Uh, Erie Blackfire. Linda, Divine, 9X, uh, John, Damien, Kim, just a few people watching us on YouTube, Moni, 
Uh, okay, follow us on our YouTube uh, channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P, and turn on the uh, live notification so you know when we go live. Follow me on my Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. Turn on uh, live notifications so you know when I go live also, okay? Also, if you like this type of information, you can donate to The African History Network. Uh, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App or through PayPal. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. Then also at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay, click on the yellow donate button on the home page. So if you want to donate five dollars, ten, fifteen, whatever it is, that definitely helps uh, uh, support us. Okay, let's uh, let's let's continue here. 6.6 million people filed for unemployment last week on top of the 3.3 million that filed the previous week. Okay, so uh, analysts agree it is likely tradition it is it is likely traditional economic indicators uh, will continue to worsen as the public health crisis continues. Analysts agree it is likely traditional economic indicators will continue to worsen as the public health crisis continues. Now, on Friday, uh, the Department of Labor will release unemployment figures for the month of March. So the unemployment, the unemployment figures for the entire, the un unemployment figures come out the first Friday of each month from the Department of Labor. Those are the job numbers, okay? It's basically the job numbers. And it tells you how many jobs were created, how many, it, uh, the sector's jobs were lost in, things like this, okay? That comes out the first Friday of each month, and that was for, and that's the information from the previous month. Okay, so um, economists surveyed said they expect to see the economy lost around 100,000 jobs uh, in the, that would be in the month of March, okay? 100,000 jobs in the month of March, bringing a decade of job creation to a screeching halt. Okay, because there were uh, under the Obama administration, there were over a uh, hundred months of private sector job growth under the Obama administration, and President Obama, in in general, handed over an in general healthy economy. There were still some issues with it. He, but President Obama never claimed it's the greatest economy in the history of America and things like this. No. Okay, they 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 they, they brought the country back from the brink of total economic collapse. Handed off to Donald Trump and look what this idiot did. So April's figure, which will include data for the worst weeks of the coronavirus pandemic is expected to be even more brutal, okay? Uh, the March report will effectively be old news. Uh, Meyer said the world, uh, the world looked very different two weeks ago than it does today, absolutely. We just saw that um, Macy's, we just saw Macy's and Cole, uh, Coles, uh, department stores. We just, we saw that they furloughed employees. Uh, Reuters.com uh, has an article dealing with this. So Macy's uh, furloughed over uh, 100,000 uh, employees. Let me pull up this article here. Just a second. Uh, where is this right here? Yeah, from um, from Reuters. I'll pull that one up. Okay. So economists are doing their best to navigate new terrain, but it is difficult. When there is a downturn in the economy, they look to history and theory for guidance. But the current crisis presents unique challenges. This is not a garden variety recession. And, and we, got, we have to go back and look at the Spanish flu pandemic, the great pandemic of 1918. This was the last time we saw largely something like this because you had um, schools shut down, businesses shut down. You had, um, uh, okay, R RWP, I got your email. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, I just checked. I'm trying to monitor so many different things here. All right, um, so I don't even know why. Because I could, I don't even know why there was a problem with the audio. Because I could hear myself through the microphone. That's why I got to get, I, I'm, uh, I got to get this. Uh, it's a small mixer that I want to get, that sync all this stuff together, and then also, 
for my Sunday night show because I'm broadcasting from home for my Sunday night show because they shut down the radio station because Governor Gretchen Whitmer, the governor here in Michigan, has a stay-at-home order. So they have all the talk show hosts broadcasting from home. So when I do my Sunday night show, uh, hopefully when I, when I get this mixture, you'll be able to hear the callers also, okay? But if we look at Reuters.com, uh, I had this article here from uh, March 30th, 2020. Macy's, Kohl's, Gap. Remember the Gap fall into the Gap? Turn to mass fur furloughs as virus crisis deepens. Major U.S. retailers, Macy's Inc., Kohl's Corp., and Gap Inc., all publicly traded on the stock exchange, said on Monday they would furlough tens of thousands of employees as, as they prepare to keep stores shut for, for longer to curb the spread of the coronavirus outbreak. Kohl's also said it would suspend its share uh, repurchase program, the stock share repurchase program, evaluate its uh, dividend plan, and draw, and draw down $1 billion from an existing credit line. Okay, joining a growing list of companies seeking to shore up their cash reserves to weather the financial uh, hit from the health crisis. Must be nice to be able to draw down a line of credit of a billion dollars. I know their financial responsibilities are much larger than mine or the average person, but you know it must be nice to be able to draw down a line of credit of a billion dollars. If you got a line of credit of a billion, how much cash on hand do you have? You know, I, I mean, you just, uh, hopefully one day I, I'll know what it, it feels like to be able to draw down a line of credit of a billion dollars. OK, so Macy's and Gap have suspended their dividends and also tapped into their credit facilities. Uh, Gap said the furloughs will affect its store employees in the United States and Canada. The company had about 129,000 employees at the end of 2019. The action will impact a majority of its about 130,000 employees, Macy said, while all workers uh, at store and store uh, distribution centers, as well as some corporate office associates, will be affected according to Coles. Now, shares of Coles, which had about 122,000 employees in, 22, in, in 2019, closed down, uh, closed down nearly not closed down nearly 9%, and Macy's stock ended nearly 3% uh, percent lower. Okay, you can uh, check out the rest of this article. This is at Reuters.com, R-E-U-T-E-R-S.com. Macy's, Kohl's, Gap, turn to mass furloughs as virus crisis uh, deepens, okay? So, and as this hits, these Republican states, okay, as these hit, as this stuff hits these Republican states uh, and these Republican governors are going to have to straighten up and fly right and, and institute social distancing and uh, tell people to uh, uh, and, and shut down non-essential businesses. As that happens, it's going, it's, it's going to get worse. OK. All right. Let's continue here. All right, so uh, economists are doing their best to navigate new terrain, but it is difficult. When there is a downturn, they look to history and theory for guidance, but the current crisis presents unique challenges. This is not a garden variety recession. Uh, so there really is no good analog or analogy. While there are parallels to the 1918 influenza pandemic, it because in that pandemic now, 50 million people in the U.S. got the flu and 675,000 died. Okay, that was in 1918. Okay, uh, about uh, uh, 500 million people wor worldwide caught it and 50 million people worldwide died. Some estimates are up to 100 million uh, who died from it. And, and this was before there was a vaccine for, for the flu. So while there are parallels to the 1918 influenza pandemic, it is difficult to disentangle its effects on the U.S. economy from World War I, which preceded it. 
Okay, and the span in this, uh, the 1918 uh, Great Pandemic, influenza pandemic, also called the Spanish Flu pandemic, that broke out during the last year of World War One. World War One ended in 1918. Also, that was more than a hundred years ago. There is inadequate data. Okay. Um, so ordinarily, it takes time for the full picture of a recession to come into focus. It, its cause and effects and its scale. This this one is different. Okay, this this uh, crisis here, this economic crisis caused by a public health crisis, is different, and is incompetent leadership also. So Michael Gapen, G A P E N, is a chief U.S. economist at Barclays. He said there are so many var variables, a uh, modal outlook is almost useless we talk about scenarios mild medium and heavy okay now uh, okay so you can read the rest of that article that's at nbcnews.com I'll post the link here on the thread of the broadcast and then we see uh, cnbc.com uh, has the article as well uh, US weekly job claims double to 6.6 .6 million US weekly job claims double to 6.6 .6 million uh, initial jobless claims surged to more than 6.6 .6 million last week, the Labor Department said Thursday. That brings the two-week total to about 10 million due to the coronavirus-induced uh, economic shutdown. Okay, now, um, let's see here. So before the coronavirus shut down major parts of the U.S. economy, the highest week for um, unemployment claims was 695,000 in 1982. The Great Recession high was 665,000 in March of 2009. You, we had two, we had 3.3 million the week of March 16th. Okay. So, however, the sudden stop as the government has. However, the sudden stop as the government has instituted social distancing policies caused a cascade of joblessness unlike anything the nation has ever seen. Though those at the lower end of the wage scale have been especially hard hit during a crisis that has been uh, that has that has seen businesses either cut staff outright or at best freeze any new hiring until the, until there's more visibility about how efforts to contain the coronavirus will work. Okay, so check that out from uh, CNBC.com as well. Um, I'm telling y'all right now, it's a whole lot of people that are starting to drive, uh, starting to do Instacart and DoorDash and Grubhub and, and, and a lot of this other stuff out here, the, the gig economy. Okay, there's still some opportunity out here. There's, um, the people are buying food prescription drugs legally prescription drugs from from at pharmacies gasoline toilet paper uh, there's probably an increase because a lot of people are staying at home there's probably an increase in uh, in the in, uh, the sale of condoms also trojan trojan sales maybe through the roof i'm not sure if trojan is a publicly traded stock but a company that makes Trojan are publicly traded, but it's probably increasing that too. Okay, um, <laughs> Ruby said the country has a economy sustained by low-level service industry jobs and very little industrial manufacturing job. Yeah, yeah, it's more service oriented. Yeah, it's more service oriented. Okay, how you doing, Tony? All right. Okay, so let's continue with this. Um, I want to do some things quickly because I have got to get out of here. Uh, let's look at very quickly here. I want to look at some updates that have taken pl place in the past couple of days. Then I want to give you the updates from the IRS. You know, I've been educating people on what's in this $2.2 trillion stimulus package, how we can take advantage of it. Okay. And to all my brothers and sisters that say the government can give $2.2 trillion but can't pay reparations, all those people should be organizing groups to study this $2.2 trillion. Uh, uh, dollar bill to find out how we can get as much as we can out of this because you're going to have other people doing the same thing. There's 377 billion dollars that's that's in here for small businesses, which includes 
black small businesses, okay? You got, in addition, in addition to all that, in addition to uh, uh, emergency aid for local governments, $180 billion emergency aid for local governments, okay? Each state will receive a minimum $1.5 billion. Experts say Washington, D.C. received a disproportionately small amount of money based on this population because it was grouped uh, for funding with U.S. territories. You're going to have, so this sounds like there are going to be some contracts available at the state level to provide various services to help out with this. We need to be focusing on, okay, how do, how do our businesses become uh, authorized vendors of a state so we can provide some of these services? Because this is what other people are going to do. I know the process. I, I managed a company where we became uh, vendors of the state of Michigan for educational services, and I was the one that had to investigate how to do it and take us through that certification uh, process. So I understand how this works. Okay, the package also includes $25 billion, $25 billion in infrastructure grants for states around the country. Now, with infrastructure, I know Democrats were fighting to get uh, broadband put into this infrastructure. I'm not sure if this includes this, but it, it possibly could because the reason why is broadband internet. The reason why is, is because with schools being shut down, okay, and some in the state of Kansas, the governor there announced that they were, they were suspending the rest of the school year, okay? They're not going back to school. So schools across the country are, uh, the, the students are being educated online, okay? What about, what about children who live in rural areas or live in parts, very, various parts of cities where they don't have broadband internet? What about there? That's why you need the infrastructure bill to include internet service, uh, broadband internet, the, the laying of um, the construction of broadband internet in those rural areas. Well, that's, those are contracts. The federal government is going to hire contractors to do that, most likely. And if they if they send that money to the state and, and leave it up to the state to do it, the state is going to hire contractors. That's a business opportunity. So we have to change, we have to change the way that we think. Because a lot of people are just focused on, oh, if the father owes back child support, he won't get a twelve hundred dollar check. He can still get unemployment. If he's unemployed, he can still get unemployment and not just unemployment from the state. He can get an additional, he will get an additional $600 a week for up to four months from the federal government. Well, 600 times two is 1,200. In two weeks, he, he'll get that that he didn't get from the $1,200 stimulus check. But he may get a portion of the $1,200 stimulus check, depends upon how far behind on child support he is but what we should be focused on is getting some of this 377 billion dollars in small business loans getting some of that for black owned businesses so that it will help them stay afloat the ones that are still operational but even the ones that are shut down they, they still they can still get tap into this money and then when things start to open up Maybe these black owned businesses can hire some of these brothers who are behind on child support so they can get caught up. There's opportunity here in this bill. But if we see this is the difference. See, success is where preparation meets opportunity. Success is where preparation meets opportunity. I taught entrepreneurship for seven years. My degree is in business administration. OK. There's a difference between a millionaire mindset and a poverty mindset. Even when opportunity is there, a poverty mindset can't see it. I'm not talking about poverty as in what's in your bank account. I'm talking about poverty in your mind. You can have a stock portfolio valued at $5 million and still have a poverty mindset. So your thoughts create feelings. Your feelings create actions and behaviors. Your actions and behaviors create results. Okay, this is why we have to be careful about the people that we have, we spend time with in our, in our circle. Because if you hang around four broke people, you're going to be number five. You know, this is why... We need to read, I don't just read history books, we need to read books like this right here, Dr. Dennis Kimbrell, The Wealth Choice, Secrets, Success Secrets of Black Millionaires, The Wealth Choice. Okay, while we're cocooned, we need, to, we need to empower ourselves with things like this right here. This is a deep book right here. I met, I met Dr. Dennis Kimbrell, well I know him, and I, and I attended an event that he and Ken Brown did here in Detroit 
that was probably close to 10 years ago because he was writing the book at the time. It took him seven years to write the book and do the surveys. He did surveys of over a thousand African-American millionaires. Okay, so I, I talked to him while he was writing the book. So these are things that we should focus on. And then focus, and, and also read books dealing with our African history and African culture, etc. That gives us our foundation. It gives us our VIPs, our values, our interests, and our principles. And this influences our economic empowerment and our political empowerment. Okay? And at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, at the top of the page, click on book list. I have a recommended uh, reading list there of about six, actually I updated, so it's close to, I think it's probably close to 80 books now. Recommended reading list of, of about 80 books. Okay, so let's look, let's look at some quick updates here dealing with coronavirus. Okay, how's everybody doing? Uh, okay, so the global number of confirmed coronavirus cases edged toward 1 million and deaths near 50,000 worldwide as the outbreak continued to hit uh, the United States, Italy, France, and Spain especially hard. Elsewhere, officials battled Elsewhere, officials uh, battled to maintain earliest uh, successes in the fight after the novel coronavirus, weighing the desire to resume normal business op operations against the risk of triggering new cases. Okay, elsewhere, officials battled to maintain to maintain earliest successes in in the fight against the novel coronavirus weighing the desire to resume normal business operations against the risk of triggering new cases okay so as i said uh, as i said at the beginning we saw a record 6.6 .6 million uh people file for uh, uh americans file for unemployment last week a stunning sign of an economic collapse triggered by coronavirus then we see the death toll in Spain continued to soar as officials reported 950 new coronavirus related uh, fatalities uh, Thursday. Uh, more than 10,000 people have been killed by the virus in Spain where the health system has been overwhelmed. Vice President Mike Pence said a model suggests that the United States faces a trajectory like that in Italy which uh, has the highest in Italy has the uh, let's see, and Italy has the uh, highest number of confirmed deaths so far with more than 13,000. Now the White House said that hold on just okay okay, can you all hear me okay? Now the White House said that even with the mitigation efforts, even with the mitigation efforts, as many as 240,000 people in America may be killed by the coronavirus, okay, which causes uh, the disease COVID-19. So it's SARS-CoV-2 is what the coronavirus is, and it, it causes the disease uh, COV-19, COVID-19. So on Tuesday, on Tuesday, uh, March 31st, when Dr. Anthony Fauci talked about this and Donald Trump talked about this at the coronavirus conference, uh, at the corona, uh, coronavirus press conference, that caused the stock market to drop almost a thousand points. Okay, now those are conservative. Those are conservative estimates. They're saying if we do basically everything right, between a hundred thousand up to up to two hundred forty thousand people are going to die from COVID-19. Well, earlier estimates where that up to 2 million would die. So even though this may sound harsh, even I mean, and I don't want people to die, but th th that is an improvement, okay? And so hopefully, and hopefully it'll be less than 100,000, of course, hopefully. But originally, there was, a, uh, there was a doctor for the U.S. Congress, and I've talked about this before, there was a doctor for the U.S. Congress who estimated that 70 million to 150 million people in the U.S. would get coronavirus and that up to 2 million people would die. Okay, we look at this article here. 
Axios.com, A-X-I-O-S, Axios.com. Congress in-house doctor, a uh, 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 congressional doctor expects 70 million to 150 million U.S. coronavirus cases. Congress in-house doctor told Capitol Hill staffers at a closed door meeting, uh, and this came out around March 14th, uh, 2020, at a closed door meeting this week that he expects 70 to 150 million people in the U.S., roughly a third of the country, to contract the coronavirus. Two sources briefed on the meeting tells Axios, okay? His name is Dr. Brian Monahan, Dr. Brian Monahan. Uh, he is the attending physician for the U.S. Congress. He told Senate chiefs of staff, staff directors, administrative managers, and chief clerks from both parties that they should prepare for the worst and offered advice on how to maintain, uh, how, how to remain healthy, okay? So he expected uh, basically up to, uh, up to 2 million people uh, uh, could die, all right? So check out the uh, check out this article. This is from Axios.com, and there was a model that came from I think it was London or something like that. A model that uh, predicted that as well in the U.S. up to two million people could die. Okay, all right. Let's continue here. Okay, in China, a count a, a county of six hundred thousand people in uh, Henan, H-E-N-A-N province, has been placed on lockdown, illustrating the dangers of declaring victory too soon as authorities grow anxious to uh, restart economic activity without unleashing a new wave of infections. Dr. Anthony, in the U.S., Dr. Anthony Fauci, the top U.S. infectious disease expert, is facing growing threats to his safety, prompting the government to step up his security. Also, the U.S. government's emergency stockpile of respirator masks, gloves, and other medical supplies is nearly exhausted, leaving states and the Trump administration to compete for personal protective equipment, according to the Department of Homeland Security officials. The whole, the whole way they're handling this is just is, is ridiculous. It's like the three stooges and the little rascals are running the government. Okay? Uh, okay, and then we saw that um, we saw that uh, physicians urged Congress to uh, ensure occupational health, uh, uh, occupational safety and health administration OSHA guidelines are upheld during the pandemic due to the shortage of personal protection equipment. The gear worn to abate dangers in the workplace. Doctors are being requested to work without the safeguards. Um, okay. So that we see that um, the death toll on Wednesday, we saw the death toll in the U.S. Uh, surpassed uh, 4,600. And now it's uh, close to uh, 5,000 with over uh, uh, 2,100, uh, over 200,000 uh, cases, confirmed cases reported in the U.S. also. Now, after sharp criticism for forcing uh, U.S. seniors who don't usually file tax returns to do so in order to get stimulus payments, the Trump administration said the federal government will use information on Social Security forms to get payments to seniors. So originally, as I reported, those, who, those seniors who get Social Security had to file a tax return as um, as required to get the stimulus checks uh now because there was so much outcry and and, and, and uh, uh democrats uh in the senate were putting pressure on the administration to change this now they just changed this on wednesday that uh and this is good news for a lot of people after facing sharp after facing sharp criticism for forcing seniors who don't usually file tax returns to do so in order to get stimulus payments the Trump administration said the government will use information on Social Security forms to get payments for seniors because they already have the information because they're giving you the, the issuing out your Social Security check. They already have your information. So why do you have to file a tax return? OK, now at Wednesday's White House briefing, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's uh, top infectious disease expert in the face of the U.S. response, said 
we could, quote, relax social distancing, end quote, once there's no new cases, no deaths. But the real turning point won't come until there's a vaccine, he said. Now, Donald Trump said officials were looking at potential flight restrictions between hard hit areas of the United States, though he noted that it would be difficult to entirely suspend air travel. The governors of Florida and Georgia announced stay at home orders. This was on Wednesday. The governors of Florida and Georgia, Governor Ron DeSantis in Florida and Governor Brian stole a goddamn election camp from Stacey Abrams. Uh, 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 his name should be Governor Brian. You stole an election from Stacey Abrams Kemp. That should be his name. OK. Um, in Georgia, Governor Brian Kemp, Republican, also canceled school for the rest of the academic year for uh, K through 12. All right. And he basically said he just found out. He basically said he just found out that uh, you could be asymptomatic. And not, you could ha not have symptoms but still be contagious. He said he basically just found that out like this week. There's something wrong with these Republicans. Seriously. So you have the governors of Florida, Ron DeSantis, okay, and Governor Brian Kemp of Georgia, both Republicans, they announced stay-at-home orders uh, on Wednesday. Okay, check out the updates from WashingtonPost.com live updates, then with coronavirus, and also NBCNews.com as well. Okay, um, and worldwide we see this about now uh, it's over 950,000 confirmed cases, close to a million confirmed cases. Also worldwide, there is a little over 200,000 people who have recovered from coronavirus as well. Okay, so it's a little more. It's about 21, 22 percent worldwide who have recovered from it. In the U.S., it's only about uh, it's only about maybe two percent that have recovered from it in the U.S. All right, let's continue here. How's everybody doing? Everybody, share this broadcast on your uh, social media pages and invite your friends to tune in as well. Okay, so I want to go to um, let's look at this. Okay, so we get six point six million people filed for unemployment. Um, let's look at the. Let's look at uh, updates here. Not updates. I want to go to, yeah, I want to go to the information that came out from the uh, IRS. Okay. So IRS releases more info on how to get coronavirus stimulus checks, ASAP. Uh, IRS releases more info on how to get coronavirus stimulus checks ASAP. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said payments will go out within three weeks for people who have their direct deposit information on file with the IRS. So this article came out uh, March 31st, uh, 2020. So I've been on uh, irs.gov forward slash coronavirus, irs.gov forward slash coronavirus um, looking for updates. Updates came down on Tuesday but it was it was uh, a lot of information that I've already talked about okay it was a lot of information I've already talked about but I'm going to uh, go through it and give it to you anyway all right so let's look at this here Okay, so new information from the IRS on Monday shines uh, more light on what people can do to get their checks from uh, the government as quickly as possible, while many families worry about paying the bills and buying food during the coronavirus crisis, which has cost millions of people their jobs. Um, okay, so for Americans eligible for the stimulus cash under the new relief law, the fastest way to receive it is to make sure they filed a tax return for 2019 or 2018. File, file your 2019 taxes, which people are filing this year, or file uh, for 2018, okay? And, and with, with bank information so the government can deposit the money directly. The IRS will use people's 2019 returns to calculate eligibility and automatically send the money to those who qualify. If they haven't filed a 2019 tax return, then 
it will be the stimulus check will be based upon your 2018 tax return. So the agency said it will publish additional information about the new forms uh, soon on irs.gov forward slash coronavirus, as I, as I have been telling you. Payments of up to $1,200 per person with an additional $500 per child who's under 17 years old will be made to U.S. residents with, with Social Security numbers who earn under $75,000 a year, who, who earn under $75,000 a year. The amount decreases by $5 per every $100 earned after that, okay, zeroing out at you making $99,000 uh, a year or more. For married couples, the phase out range is $150,000 to, uh, to $198,000. Now the IRS said Americans who weren't required to file taxes in the last two years would have to file a simple tax return, but they, they changed that on Wednesday. They changed that uh, uh, later for people who uh, get social security, they changed they change that. Now, let's look at this here. Let's look at the updates at irs.gov forward slash coronavirus. Also, for small business owners who want to take advantage of the small business loans that, that can be converted to grants, the small business loans that can be converted to grants, uh, you go to sba.gov, uh, sba.gov, and then right on the home page, um, click on, um, uh, they have coronavirus right on the home page, click on there. It gives you the information, the criteria to apply for the small business loans, okay? All right, so... When you go to irs.gov forward slash coronavirus, at the top of the page as it is now, it says economic impact, payment, what you need to know, okay? And uh, you just click right there, and this has the updates that came out, uh, uh, it was last updated April 1st, 2020. Okay, so check, so check irs.gov for latest information, skip over that. Who is, who is eligible for the economic impact payment? I talked about that as well. Um, Okay, $75,000 or less, you get $1,200, um, and then an additional $500 for each uh, child. How would the IRS know where to send my payment? The vast majority of people do not need to take any action. The IRS will calculate and automatically send the economic impact payment to those eligible, okay? For people who have already filed their 2019 tax returns, the IRS will use the information to calculate the payment amount. For those who have not yet filed their return for 2019, the IRS will use uh, information from their 2018 tax filing to calculate the payment, okay? The economic impact payment will be deposited directly into the same banking account reflected on the uh, return file. If you have to update your bank account information with the IRS, okay, that is, I'll give you the form number. Let's see here. Um, allocation refund, that's form number uh, 8888 at irs.gov, okay? Form number 8888 at irs.gov. That's the allocation of refund form. So if you have to change your bank account number or if you decide that you want a paper check and not direct deposit, you fill out that form submitted to the IRS, okay? If you have to do a change of address form, if you've moved since your last, since you filed your last tax return, you have to file a change of address form with the IRS. That's form number 8822 at irs.gov form number 8822 at irs.gov. Now, normally it takes four to six weeks for them to do a change of address form to, co to complete the change of address. I don't know why it takes so long, but hopefully they'll do it faster here, okay? Um, and it, once again, they want checks to start going out. Uh, Steve Mnuchin said, the Treasury Secretary said last week that he wanted checks to go out in three weeks, start going out in three weeks. That's very, very aggressive. They're still trying to figure out the process to make all this stuff happen. So, um, okay, hopefully we'll see, all right? Um, I, uh, so I am not typically required to file a tax return. Can I still receive my payment? Yes, the IRS will use the information on the form SSA 1099 or, or form RRB 1099 to generate economic impact payments to recipients of benefits reflected in the form SSA 1099 
or form RRB 1099 who are not required to file a tax return and did not file a return in 2018-2019. This includes, pay attention, this includes senior citizens, social security recipients, and railroad retirees who are not otherwise who are not otherwise required to file a tax return. That is the update that just came out on Wednesday. People who get social security, senior citizens, things like this who normally don't file a tax return, you don't have to file one to get the stimulus check, okay? Since the IR, since the IRR since the IRS would not have information regarding any dependents for these people, each person will receive $1,200 per person uh, without the additional amount for any dependents at this time, okay? Now, I have filed, the next question, I have filed, I have a tax filing obligation, but have not filed my tax return for 2018 to 2019. Can I still receive an economic impact payment, stimulus payment, stimulus check? Yes, the answer is yes. The IRS urges anyone with a tax filing obligation, the IRS urges anyone with a tax filing obligation who has not yet filed a tax return for 2018 or 2019 to file as soon as they can to receive an economic impact payment. Taxpayers should include direct deposit banking information on the return if you want them to send it to you direct deposit. It's going to be faster direct deposit than a paper check. I need to file a tax return. How long are the economic impact payments available? That's a very good question. Okay, now the other thing is there is going to be a, a fourth stimulus bill. This is the third stimulus bill. The first bill, I'm sorry, there's going to be a fourth coronavirus bill. This is the third bill, the $2.2 trillion one. That's the third bill. The first one was for $8.3 billion. The second one was for $100 billion, and that was that funded testing, uh, uh, free coronavirus tests and things like this, and some aid hospitals needed. The third bill is the $2.2 trillion bill. The next one is going to be larger than this. The next one is going to be probably between $2 trillion to $4 trillion. Okay? Because it's expected that up to 47 million people are going to file for unemployment. So the next bill is going to be even more. So African-Americans, we need to organize and study this $2.2 trillion bill. Read these articles I'm giving you. Go to irs.gov forward slash coronavirus. Go to sba.gov. We need to study. There's money out here. We got to figure out how to get this money as opposed to, you know, talking about, oh, you know, the, the father won't get to $1,200. It's going to go, that, once again, as I said at the beginning, when the IRS holds that money, the IRS doesn't keep it. If you owe back child support for whatever reason, I'm not attacking anybody. If you owe back child support, if the IRS holds the entire check, and some people will, some people are going to get a partial check, okay? But the IRS withholds that entire check. The IRS doesn't keep that money. They send it to the state where the custodial parent is. And that money goes to the custodial parent for the child. So it's not like the IRS just keeps the check, keeps the money. No, that's not what happens. It goes to the parent who you're paying child support payments to. That's what happens. Okay. But at the same time, most of those men, if they're unemployed, if they lost their job due to coronavirus, et cetera, they'll be eligible for unemployment. And they will not just get unemployment from the state, they will also get the additional $600 per week in unemployment benefits coming from the federal government for up to four months. That's part of this bill also. 600 times two is 1,200. 600 times two is 1,200. So, you know, a lot of this stuff just floating around on social media, it's just designed to get views and clicks and likes and all this stuff, okay? We need to research this. Because when you research this, you find out it's entirely different than what a lot of people are putting out here. Okay, so I need to file a tax return. How long are the economic impact payments available? For those concerned about visiting a tax professional, 
or local community organization in person to get help with a tax return. These economic impact payments will be available throughout the rest of 2020. They'll be available throughout the rest of 2020. Where can I get more information? irs.gov forward slash coronavirus, irs.gov forward slash coronavirus, as I have said before, okay? So check, so check that out there, irs.gov forward slash coronavirus. We're gonna post the link here uh, on the thread of the broadcast also. Okay, now, very quickly here. How's everybody doing? Everybody share this broadcast on your social media pages, African American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network, okay? A current promotion, buy one month, get two months free. And for a limited time only, we have it set up. You can also uh, pay in two installments as well. Email me at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We can get you up and running today to promote your business. So a lot of people are at home right now and they want something to read and they want to learn about African-American history. Well, the book, Black Heroes of Fire, Black Heroes of Fire by author DeKalb Walcott Jr. is definitely a book you should check out. This book tells the history of the first African-American fire company in Chicago. They were known as Engine 21 and they were Chicago's first organized paid African-American firefighting company. Find out about the heroism of engine number 21 in the book black heroes of fire is available at amazon amazon.com and also the website black heroes of fire.com black heroes of fire.com by author the Cobb walcott jr okay now a lot of people want to get their financial house in order for 2020 okay even with this not like an economic catastrophe to let you know i need to get my stuff together well certified financial planner marticia patterson can help you with this. Now, she has over 20 years of uh, experience in uh, the wealth management industry. She's a certified financial planner, and she uh, will help you apply proven tools, techniques, and strategies so you can meet your financial goals. What she is offering is a transformative way of thinking, which will lead to a successful outcome. You can contact her for a free consultation consultation today. Let her know you found out about this from the African History Network. Uh, visit her website, Patterson Plans, the number 17.com, Patterson Plans, the number 17.com, or give her a call 646-552-4384, 646-552-4384. Okay. All right. Now, a lot of people want to get in shape. Okay. They're, uh, they may be off work now, they're at home, all the gyms are closed, but they want to get in shape, okay? Well, SheRanHerselfFit.com can help you with this. Now, she ran herself, uh, fits mission is to inspire and motivate women to make healthy lifestyle changes. She Ran Herself Fit is a brand that promotes women living a healthy lifestyle, but making small sacrifices in your daily routine and changing your diet, which can combat many of the different diseases that are prevalent in the African-American community. The owner of She Ran Herself Fit, her name is Felicia. Felicia lost over 200 pounds by changing her diet and running. Now, running may not be your motivation, but find what drives you to be fit. Visit their website, SheRanHerselfFit.com, and they, they have apparel there at the website that you can purchase, and you can also see before and after pictures of Felicia, okay? SheRanHerselfFit.com. Okay, let's continue here. Um, how you doing, Yolanda? What about college students who weren't required to file? College students, okay, if college students, okay, we, Yolanda, what about them? Are you talking about college students getting stimulus checks? If college students um, are, if you claim your college student on your taxes as a dependent, they don't get, the college student does not get a stimulus check. If a college student files their own tax returns and they file as independent, then they get a stimulus check. Okay, as long as their income is under, as long as they meet their income requirements, their income is under $75,000 a year. If their income is $99,000 a year or more, they don't get one. Okay, so it depends upon how they file. All right, or if you claim them as a dependent, if you claim them as a dependent on your taxes, they don't get a stimulus check. Okay, what about child support? Um, okay, so 
there, there was, I, I talked about the child support issue before. Maybe, I'm not sure if Anthony heard me discuss that. I talked about it in previous broadcasts also. Um, and then th there was an article from NBCnews.com that just came out April 1st, 2020. Uh, over 3 million Americans delinquent on child support could lose stimulus checks. The Treasury Department, which has a data, uh, uh, okay. Um, let's see here. About 5.8 million custodial parents were owed child support, but just 2.5 million received it in full in 2015, according to a comprehensive census survey. Um, this leaves 3.3 uh, million who are overdue. Not all will qualify for money. Income thresholds max out at $99,000 for an individual or $198,000 for a married couple. But many who are otherwise eligible and, and might be desperate for cash will see their pay, payments intercepted. Uh, many will lose the money entirely. Non-custodial non non -custodial parents overdue on child support owe an average of $21,000 according to a December 2019 government report. Owing back, owing back taxes or student loan debt won't be a problem for those seeking stimulus checks, but past due child support will be penalized as long as the information is properly, as long as the information is properly reported by states to the Treasury Department. Once the payment is intercepted, the department is tasked with facilitating the transfer of the money to the entitled custodial parent, okay? Under a federal program, state child support agencies share information with the Treasury Department on who, on who is behind on obligations so the agency can uh, take the money from income tax rebates or other payments. The U.S. government also tries to force child support payments in other ways, such as denying passports to delinquent parents who owe more than $2,500. Now, um, this, is, this is based upon 1996 IRS tax law. That's what this is. This is, this is not something special that came up with here, for here. This is following existing tax code. So if we look at... Uh, there's an article from the Wall Street Journal that dealt with uh, frequently asked questions here that talks about this. Okay, March 31st, 2020, coronavirus stimulus payments. When will they be sent and who is eligible? This is Wall Street Journal, uh, WSJ.com. And if we go to page five, the question was asked, What about child support? What about child support? The normal, I, the normal IRS rules for child support and tax refunds will apply, which means that refunds for people who are behind on those payments may be smaller, or they may not get one at all because it goes to the custodial parent. That's based upon tax law that already exists. So a lot of people who are talking about this don't know that because they don't study tax law. Okay, so if we look at the um, if we look at the article that I dealt with before that talks about this dealing with child support, um, it's from NBCNews.com. And Senator Chuck Grassley, Republican from Iowa, was quoted because he helped write he helped write this bill. Uh, it talks about the issue there, and it cites the uh, 1996 tax law as well, okay? But as I said before, most of these brothers, if they're unemployed, they'll qualify for unemployment from uh, the state, and they'll get the additional $600 a week in unemployment from the federal government as well, Okay. And there was an article here, let's see. Uh, the stimulus check won't be in the mail for Americans' child support. The stimulus check won't be in the mail for Americans who owe child support. This is the uh, article that you've heard me talk about from NBCnews.com. This was probably one of the first ones to explain this. This is from March 27th, 2020, and it was updated March 31st, 2020, okay? And if we look at the... Um, 
when you look at this article, it cites the 1996 uh, uh, tax law, okay? So check that out. My computer, the second computer is running slowly here. All right. Okay, so we went through the updates. Uh, I did that. Small business loans. Now, when you go to sba.gov, okay, a lot of people don't know this. When you go to sba.gov, and you click on uh, the information for coronavirus, it deals with small business loans. One of the stipulations is, is that no uh, owner of the company, you say you have a company that has three owners, okay? No owner of the company, no person who owns 50% or more of the company can be, can be behind more than 60 days in child, uh, child support. No person in the company that owns uh, more than 50% of the company can be behind more than 60 days in child support. So that means that if you own 40% of the company and you're behind a year in child support for whatever reason or behind six months or whatever it is, you may have payment arrangements set up, but you're still behind. Okay. Um, you can, that business still qualifies for a business loan. Or you could be a 50% stake owner in the company and be behind 30 days or 45 days and still qualify. There's opportunity here. People are focused on a $1,200 stimulus check. There's, op there's a ton of opportunity. The bill is 2.2 trillion. There's a ton of opportunity. Those of us with Native American background and we're connected to the Native American community, it's $8 billion going to tribal nations. We need to talk, we need to focus on working with some of them. And, 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 and how can we pull resources together? Those who, those who get stimulus checks, $1,200 and 500 per child, okay? For people who have some money saved and things like this, we need to, and, and people who are getting unemployment, we need to figure out, okay, so those in the family, we need to put together groups of, you know, 10 people, 20 people, 30 people, friends and family, et cetera church members. So how can we pull resources together and buy some of this property, some of these vacant lots in our community, some of these burnt out houses and renovate them? And then we can hire brothers who are out of work, who may be behind on child support, we can hire them to renovate the buildings. There's opportunity here, we have to think. That's the difference between the millionaire mindset and the poverty mindset, okay? Your thoughts create feelings, your feelings create actions and behaviors, your actions and behaviors create results. So this is why we have to be careful the people we spend our time with and the type of information we take in. Because you got other people going to figure out how, how, how can we get part of this 2.2 trillion? How can we get our piece of the pie? That's what we need to be focusing on. And the next stimulus bill is going to be more than this one. There's opportunity here. Success is where preparation meets success is where preparation meets opportunity. What are you preparing yourself for? Are you preparing yourself to just keep complaining and say that they won't give us reparations, they won't do this, okay? Or are you preparing to get some of this money? If you don't want it, send it to me. I'll take it. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. If you don't want it, I'll take it. I know what to do with it. Earlier this week, if you live in Detroit on Channel 10, Comcast, city council meets, they're meeting on Zoom now, okay, because of the stay in. They're discussing how to how business owners, especially black business owners here in the city of Detroit, can get this money for small businesses. And they were meeting about this, going through this, and, and, and dealing with how to educate our people on this. On Thursday, uh, 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 blackenterprise.com, go to blackenterprise.com. They're going to have a virtual town hall explaining these opportunities for businesses and explaining the, the loan process. So you got one group of people talking about how we take advantage of this opportunity. You have another group of people talking about we, we, they won't give us this, they won't give us that. Okay. All right. So you figure out, you know, there are three types of people in this world. That the disability, yeah, disability, you you get a stimulus check as long as you meet the uh, uh, income uh, requirement, Sheila. Uh, you get a uh, disability, you, you do get a stimulus check. Um, 
the three types of people in this world, people who make things happen, people who watch things happen, and people who wonder what the hell just happened. Which one do you want to be? Okay, you have to figure out which one you want to be, because I can tell you which one I am. I'm the one that makes things happen. I've always been like that. I want to, I want to be the one, I don't, want to, I don't want to read about the news in the newspaper. I want people to read about me, what I did. The three types of people in the world, people who make things happen, people who watch things happen, and people who wonder what the hell just happened. Okay. Um, go to uh, sba.gov. Now, these loans are not for startup. Uh, the, the, the business loans tied to coronavirus are not startup business loans. They're loans to go to businesses whose business has been negatively impacted by coronavirus. So your business is shut down or you've seen a significant loss in revenue. You had to lay employees off, whatever, whatever it is, okay? Uh, go to sba.gov, okay, and right on the homepage, they uh, click on coronavirus. They have the information there. You can you go through and read that, all right? So, and then also, if you meet certain requirements, if you get the loan to meet certain requirements, like you don't lay off employees and other requirements, the loans get converted to grants. So it's free money. You don't pay it back. And you got people talking about, they won't give us this, they won't give us that, all right, whatever. It could be a $10 trillion bill. The same people would be complaining about the same thing. That's why you don't see me with a whole lot of people. I'm very careful about who I have around me. I don't have time for that simple Simon ass nonsense. Go complain to somebody else. All right, guys, look, hey, we have to get out of here. I, got, I have a lot of work to do. You have to get out of here. Remember, um, so um, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. My DVD lectures are there, digital downloads, recommended reading list of books also. You can donate to the African History Network if you want to support us, $5, $10, $15, whatever it is. Dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show through PayPal at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. Click on the yellow donate button also. African-American business owners, email me, customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com, customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. And uh, we'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. We got special promotions going on right now. Buy one month, uh, get two months free. We can get you up and running today. And then also we put your uh, commercial and promote you in the audio podcast as well. So not just Facebook and YouTube, but also the audio podcast of my broadcast that are on eight different podcast platforms. iTunes, CastBox, Acast, FM Player, TuneIn, Stitcher. Okay, so we have a real opportunity for you. All right, we have to get out of here. Uh, listen to the African History Network show Sundays, 9 p.m. 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're, we're broadcasting here. We're on 910 a.m. the Superstation WFDF. But we also broadcast right here, Facebook, the African History Network, and YouTube, Michael M. Hotel. Okay? Remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. What kind of forever? What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is what you've been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself, okay? If you can't change the people around you, then change the people around you, okay? Your average income, your, your annual income is the average of what your, what, basically what your five closest friends make. Your annual income is the average of basically what your five closest friends make, okay? So if you hang around five broke people, you're going to be number six. Okay, so if you want to make more money, you may have to get yourself some new friends. All right, if you can't change the people around you, then change the people around you. Right now, it's correct. Wrong behavior is not over till we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.